Best of three between OG and Invictus Gaming. The new camp positions and just the, the pudge pulls that have been happening recently. Just seems to be working a lot better. Weaver. Oh, Jirax. Nice time to rotate up. Shikuchi's on cooldown for the moment with a hook over in. That is one simple rotation into the first blood in favor of OG. And it's a fairly high level. S4. Nice blink call. And with the gust as well. Ember Spirit won't take any more damage. Takes the call and brace. They drop down the golem. Connect him up with the fatal bonds. Hook back in from GRX. Doesn't have his dismember available. They still don't have level six on that punch, but it won't matter. Now he'll have it. Or oh, actually just shy shy of it. The kill of the winter wyvern wasn't enough. But the live stealer, the stun, the gust, perfect on the slaughter. Even called back in. He couldn't get the crush off. That could have been life-saving. He'll get it off, but Axe will still have the spin. Bobo thinking about coming back into the fight, but it won't happen. Yeah, I don't really think they can contest this rush unless they get a really good winter wyvern ultimate, but how's oh, he just going to walk in there? The crush is off, S4, look for the call, won't happen, the curse is only on a solo S4, this won't achieve anything, and Nota was initiated on by Bernie, but now is burning on the wrong side, the tracks, Fatal Bonds will connect him to the winter wyvern, support is there in the form of the slana, not to mention you've got a small little weaver running around the back lines, if they can keep the suns on him, then maybe they've got a chance with a gust, the sounds is there, Pudge will go down to burning, but you've lost your weaver, back over the fight, next to the shrine, to early on the dunk, he was just trying to kill off Burning S4, he just didn't have enough damage, Burning didn't toggle at the right time for him, and now his no tell, realizing with open wounds, live stealer, he's going to run right over them, DK has to arm and toggle his way to freedom too, so we're in two different fights, the cold embrace allowing live stealer to survive just that little bit longer, your fatal burns them up, bonds them up, and this will be a sacrifice in from Fly, and IG, they successfully contest the death of Roshan. Save him from getting blink stunned into Hook, into Dismember, which is how he dies. JRX turns around and he's burning. He's out there. He holds him. Burning. Okay, look at all the, look at all the <laughs> life coming back in. But S4, he'll get the call off. This allows no tell more time to attack, but not when Wyvern gives the cold embrace. They have to go for another gust. Don't let him back inside that rage. Long cooldown for two more seconds of the hook down. They have enough damage. They'll burn the Aegis the Immortal. Weaver's now here to help out, but the Dragonite's rotating into the mid. They put down the Sentry Ward, so they see the Weaver. So Blink, Call, and OG change the targets. They don't get the cull. Oops! Uh, that's not the hero we meant to hook, but it won't matter if Notel can keep the control on him with a 4-star from the Slaughter. Space being created by Burning, but he's being stunned up, and now with the extra help maybe from the Slaughter, but no S4. Another fantastic call. The Llama's just watching the action. Prime pole position. OP will be able to get two of the kills, but GRX will finally put him down. OG with three heroes up, all on low life. The Slaughter would love a crack at this. He's got the four stuff and Blink Dagger available. So Blink, amplification up, but he's got no other friends, or does he? The curse is out, and it will turn around and actually end Jirax's spree. And we go once again, looking for the crush. Blink off cooldown right now. There is no smoke and no Draw Ranger, so XSS will actually TP to the Shrine. They're looking for a kill on a way far out. Yeah, Anna is trying to be again be this bait. He got Vale Discord up, and they jumped to the back lines, pushing forward. Do they have enough? They've already brought down Fly. And now S4 into the cover of the BKB. Can maybe help out his teammate Anna, who's inside the river. But Splinter, multiple parts. Amber called up again. The Culling Blade, a little bit off timing, but it won't matter. The Ember Spirit is down. Does he want to buy it back to try and tilt this fight around? DK, cold embraced. I mean, uh, actually cursed up for the moment. The Crush will be there. Life Seal is in, trying to kill off Anna. But again, S4 trying to create more space. Calling up, blade mailing up. Anna is having to toggle his way through this. So finally, they get the Crush off an Invictus game. Can they turn this up? S4, he's locked in. He willingly called into that fight. Jurex can at least keep the slaughter in, in bay, but Burning moves over towards the hotel. Instant first bash, so Gosa will protect him. He's got the Hurricane Pike as well for a little bit of movement speed. But will he get away? Down, gust away? No, it's not enough. Really know what the game plan is for OG here. How do you actually start this fight? I guess, I guess kill Ember is probably the best way, but even he has buyback and remnant back into the fight, so he might not be the best target for them to kill. They should jump S4, able to get that call off. The Ember Spirit trying to keep on top of the Drow Ranger. The Hawk will pull S4 back to safety, and OP is in rather deep. Jumps himself a little bit further away thanks to the defensive spirit. And that's just got to be it, man. It's got to be Yule Scepter into a nice hook. It's an easy setup with the Yule Scepter as well, but Burning able to rage in time. And now the call is a three man one up from S4 with the rocks and the Fell of Bonds. The curse is out. It's on the Drone Ranger, but no one's there to attack it. Jurax keeping the life still under control. S4, he doesn't actually have his Culling Blade, but he needs the extra spins. They'll burn through the Aegis of the Immortal. And now it's buyback time. Out for No Tell. They still don't have Anna available. A quick hook. It doesn't pull Burning back far enough. 
Here we go again. Burning Jones 4. The lawyers sort of try and protect him. Try and go straight for the ranked. S4 able to get the call off with the creep wave there. They turn their attention towards the Ember Spirit. He was dropping low, but then just gets pulled back out. And now it's up to a life stealer. Infest dodges a little bit of the damage. Still on the run. Now you got a cold embrace, but it's Anna who really needs some distance. S4, he goes in once again with the golem behind him and the gust. Maybe there's enough time. He goes for the culling blade too early. All oh, they burn is the Aegis Immortal. Throw Ranger. He got caught inside the curse, but this is a better one from Jirax with that dismember. The Weaver is gone. That nuisance is removed. They're looking for the Blink Crush. Jirax quick in with the Ghost Scepter. You do have that Ember Spirit, a quick four star up. They're going to chain the stuns off just because that Lotus Orb reflects. No tell. They're looking to lend the Gust again. That range rack's low. No tell dropping so quickly. They just have the life. They have the power. Jirax will go for a dismember. Maybe with that death of the Slaughter, they can turn this fight around. But nope. It looks like it's IG still standing strong. They push in further. But it's the Ember Spirit and Life Stealer combo. And there it is. GG is called out. Invictus Gaming Take game one against OG. Jesus, this Ember Spirit was a complete piece of this game. OP. With this now fourth position or five position, Jakiro. Jakiro is great. I think he's very underrated. Firstly, I think his talents are really cool. Oh, hello, OG. Oh, Roll forward. Buddy. Hello, um, and goodbye, Ogre. It was really, really nice knowing you. This will allow OG not only to get first blood, but they'll also secure three of the bounty rooms. So I'm a little surprised that he didn't go for the cost works because. It's far, it's a far more common build. Oh, oh, he's going in for it! He's looking for the kill on the Invoker and he's got it! The perfect kick, the perfect control! Wow, that was And there's nothing Ogre could have done about it. For his slider fist. Now, Cold Snap over on Notel. They need to get first the stun and the ignite. Keep that Cold Snap rolling and burning. Not enough mana to actually trigger an open wound. So Notel looking to try and turn on, on this fight with the Shallow Grave. We have a little bit longer to fight. A Shadow Wave is also available, burning, backing out. Remember, he still has that toggle with the tornado. Notel actually toggling even harder with a hook shot forward from S4. They catch out the Invoker and Jirax plus the Ember on the back line. Did so much damage. IG will lose four heroes. Looks like, and they don't have a sentry ward over there. Nope, they do have one on, on the Ogre for now. Oh, the Storm Bolt with the damage is a mix of physical as well as magical. And a pure spectacle of death and IG. Uh, the main course for OG is uh, OP locked inside the cogs, kicked down. Watching that top lane where the gank was coming in from the live stealer. The BKB triggered off. The Shallow Grave's already been used to with the Sunstrike. S4 just waits out his turn. More supports on the way. It's the Tornado coming over from OP. No tell. Hunting down that live stealer. He's got face boost to run through, but is he enough live steal with S4? Hook shutting in. They have a lot of damage, and No tell just hits him hard with a crit. Things could get a little bit hairy for OG if they don't make things happen Ooh. with this Aegis. That crush just off target. S4's going to lock him inside with the cog. Templification's already up. Live Steel will pop out. The Ice Fight just trying to try create a little bit of space to get out, but S4 hook shots back in again, looking for a target. Maybe with the kick and the control, they find it over on the slot, they have it, and even the extra slow is onto Ogre Majai. Lotus Orb will try and protect him. The push up, maybe this is the bigger kill, however. Burning, silence up, no tell, needs just one hit. Blink comes off cooldown, and there it is. One hit to the crit. Q pushed back up by Jirax. Now he's stuck up on a clip top, and the rest of the support is there. Q will slowly fall, they just watch him die. Bit by bit, he'll tick down, push down, but the Gemma True Sight regathered. He's like outputting a ton of damage while being oh, so bold. resilient. Caught the Live Stealer. Also managed to get the silence on him, the follow up kick from Jirax. Can they keep it going? Live Stealer still cannot rage. He cannot infest. Remember, he doesn't have buyback, he already expended it. But you got 13 seconds till IG are back at five men, and they're not gonna even have that time. Jakiro down for almost a hundred seconds, and no tell. Look to the opening. Lincoln's has already been triggered. He doesn't have the blood corner available, but he's got a huge amount of physical damage. One swing, there it is. And this may even be the game with Invoker buying back. He cannot die again. The jump forward, the damage on his bed is high, but you've still got fly right behind him. Gets the shallow grave off. OP looking for his target too, and the best one they've got is Anna sitting inside the base. You get the quick bash, but again, you're losing heroes in the hook shot in. S4 goes for the play, the four star foul, but OP's in trouble, he's down for two minutes. That's the opening that OG really wanted. Burning kept off the front line, Sturex is chasing him and actually kicking him further out. They might be able to battle under the Triumph, they can trigger this now, Burning will have a little bit more life, but you've got the Shallow Grave, you've got the Sustain, the Blink Crush, space might be created, but is it going to be enough? The Yule Scepter up from Slaughter. He'll break free of the Bloodthorn, but not from Anna. A quick slide of fits and fly with a Shadow Wave damage. He'll find that kill. Four heroes down for IG. It's 
but OG are just doing their work and they will call it IG. We're going to a game three. OG will force it, but it wasn't easy. And, and they do get the turn. Oh, what? Ah, uh, the OGs won it. They went with my pick. They don't have the damage to find the kill. Burning stood so far away from Mid lane, him. they start with the Syrian chains and do a quick rot. What's he gonna do? Imprison up. Like he can actually get hooked back straight away. Jerk is so low. We actually try to wait it out. OP will get the first blood. Yep. They know every single time it's about that time for Slaughter to make their move. Q. Blink. Crush. A lot of supports coming over. Jirax, he does have stick charges available. Actually denies himself. And now you get the side of Fisterian Chains. Combining it with the Veil of Discord. No tell will move over as well. And up from dropping down very, very low. You've got the extra heal plus the shallow grave up from Fly. They're trying to get close enough to him with the solo assumption, but no tell will sacrifice his life to keep the Ember Spirit alive. But will that even be enough? No, Ember will die as well. And the crush on the back lines. Fly and S4. S4 will finally split. But is the damage already done? Weaver doesn't have time lapse, but he does have the ability. Send him up and towards the air with the storm ruling, but he comes back down again with one charge as triggered. The buyback out from the Ember, trying to keep the fight going. But if he dies again with the blink crush, Ember is gone. 40 seconds on the sideline with the dieback. S4 has re-entered his brutally form, but burning right behind him. The clap is beautiful, but the damage is repaired with time lapse. S4 still on the run, actually leading Invictus Gaming over towards Jira. But it's no tell under the tower. He'll die again too. The soul assumption charge is just building up time and time again. And now it's up to Jirax on the front lines. A blink, a crush, another amplification. One by one, they all go to the slaughter. OG. And where is? The collateral, where is the extra Radius damage with the amplification on S4? Burning, again, they knew exactly where to go. Brewmaster will finally fall. He, he crossed almost the entire diagonal of the map. More spam damage. Blink forward. Ember's gonna get caught by it. No tell, still there. They hook him away from the slaughter. And with the defensive imprisonment that actually happened from OP, Terrorblade has a little bit more distance to get away. There's still no metamorphosis. It's on cooldown for one more second. So if No Tell wants to try and turn this one, they'll have the option to do so. A quick hook, dragging, burning down. He'll have to time lapse pretty early in the fight. Terrorblade, Sunder, two seconds, one second. is coming back off cooldown right now. S4 blinks into the, into the climb with a spirit forward from Anna. They find the opening over on Q. Odie again with a defensive imprisonment. Pushes himself out for the Hurricane Pike, but he dies shortly after the... And no follow-up from IG. IG don't have good vision in that area, though. They only have vision on the north side, but they're not even close to over there. There's lost Blink, clap, split. Onto the Slaughter, as well as onto the Weaver. They all try and get their distance, but they send the OD up. It's the Storm Brewling that's done it. So Slaughter's on the run back out of here with all the Terrorblade Illusions and Metamorphosis. They got so much damage. OD will be protected by his BKB. Drops the hammer, so the Pudge will drop. But really, does he have enough of his teammates left? They've done all their damage possible. Fly will finally die as well, but the buyback had to come in from Slaughter, so he can Blink Crush back in again. They haven't triggered it yet. They're being very, very patient. The oh. Storm Brewlings are creating enough space that OG, they can finish up Roshan before any kind of counter magic can be there for OG, uh, for IG and Jirax. Well, he's more of a distraction. The frontline tank, the meat shield, and another hook just short of the slaughter. They move forward, no tell with the extra slows. The spirit jumps forward, and Anna! The damage output is huge from him! If anyone TPs up high, oh, okay, he's a little bit too early. <laughs> and the hook was a little bit too short. Reveals his position, but the damage is being done. They get the stomp down. This could be big. Catching out Anna with the Shallow Grave again. Fly is going to be the right place at the right time. Burning as to back out. There's just so much Terror Blade in the front lines. It's a hawk from Jirax pulling back in the slaughter into a fight he does not want to be part of. They've lost the familiars. They've lost their stuns. The Brutalies are causing absolute chaos on the back lines. While Nortel trying to focus more on the ranks. Burning will come through and offer his life. OD's down as well. There's just too much firepower in the OG arsenal. They'll push down closer, fighting underneath the tier four towers. Jirax is even just sitting there. Ghost stepped it up, doesn't care. He's got another hook available. And even now, Shallow Grave is back off cooldown. They're losing everything, and this could be the game. They've lost all five, and in fact, it is GG. OG, they will force to a third after losing game one, but they will still take the series at 2-1. I think No-Tail had like 650 damage, just almost better than a rapier, I would say, because he had a DD. So this is now the third game where the Ember Spirit really has been, I want to say the unsung hero. There was definitely a lot of people singing his song, 37 and a half thousand damage.